Hey everyone, welcome to our series all about four ultra rare amazing Bible stories. Each week we are going to be learning about one amazing Bible story. We hope you can join us for the next four weeks because we are so excited. But I'm now going to hand over to our awesome worship team so we can go and praise Jesus together. love praising Jesus with you. Now I'm going to hand over to Millie and Doug. Hello my name is Millie and welcome to Unicorn Chat, the show where we talk about the greatest animals in the world, unicorns. And today I'm joined by a very special guest, a unicorn. Yes, we have a real life unicorn here in the studio and his name is 
Dog. Your dog? Your name is Dog? Yeah, just Dog. You don't have a more magical name than Dog? Nope. <sighs> Can I give you a more magical name? Like Sparkles? Please do not call me Sparkles. Okay, Dog. It's great to have you here. Well, you caught me on a good day. Uh, the Bruins aren't playing later, so why not? The Bruins? Fun fact, unicorns love hockey. I did not know that. But what I did know is, unicorns are mighty. We are? Come on, Doug, tell us something mighty you've done. Well, when me and my buddy comrade the Pegasus was moving, I carried his love seat into the new place all by myself. That's a mighty deed. Ever try lift the love seat, kid? They are big and heavy. I was expecting something a little bit more mighty. I'm just a unicorn. I spend most of my days hiding from humans, trying to keep my existence a mystery. If you want mighty, you want to try Jesus. Jesus? You know, healed the sick and the disabled. Raised from the dead, rose himself from the grave. Ooh, that sounds mighty indeed. Mightiest I know. Is he a unicorn too? No, he's got some. Well, he was fully god, but also fully human. And he was mighty enough to save humankind from the poison of sin. Wow. And all right, look, you want me to lift some furniture? <laughs> Move a couple of boulders. Fight Bigfoot. I can do all those things. But if you want to see something truly mighty, well, that's Jesus. Cool. So we're going to take a little break, but I'll be back in a gif with more unicorn chat. Thank you so much, Millie and Doug. That was awesome. Now is the time for you to go and get your notebooks, your Bibles and your pens ready to take some notes. You've got 10 seconds. Go. In the field of animal science, there are many specialised areas that study similar animals. Marine biologists study sea creatures. Entomologists study bugs. Mammalogists study mammals. But just outside of the recognised field of biology is a group of people called cryptozoologists, who study everything from ape-like creatures to dog-like creatures to prehistoric sea creatures. Cryptozoologists are not interested in animals we have in captivity and can study up close. They're looking for animals that may not exist, creatures like the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot and the Unicorn. Unicorns have fascinated kids and adults for centuries. They are most often depicted simply as horses that have a singular horn growing from their foreheads. And they are believed to have otherworldly powers. People believe these are rare beasts to be mighty and magical with special powers. The term unicorn is also often used to refer to someone or something rare and special. Companies that have the potential to make a lot of money can be unicorns. People who are seen as special can also be referred to as unicorns. It's certainly fair to say the man we know as Jesus might well be called a unicorn. He was mighty and powerful. He had the power to heal the sick and the disabled. And talk about rare, in the history of the world, there's never been a man like Jesus. Jesus is the son of God and many centuries before he was born, God gave us a taste of the power he possessed. When God's chosen people, Israel, had their camp overturned by venomous snakes, God did a miracle that saved the people from the snake venom. Turn with me to Numbers chapter 21 verses 4 to 9 and we can read it together. It says this. They travelled from Mount Hall along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There was no bread, there was no water and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. 
the Lord said to Moses, make a snake and put it on your pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. Many centuries later, while speaking with a priest named Nicodemus, Jesus compared himself to the bronze snake that healed God's people. Turn with me to John chapter 3, verse 14 to 16, and we can read it together. It says this. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Nicodemus was a scholar. He knew the words of Moses well, and he would have instantly remembered the story of the bronze snake. The people had sinned and were dying because of their sin. When Moses lifted the pole with the bronze snake, anyone who looked at the snake was healed. Jesus came to save us from the poison of sin. He knew he would die if he did not intervene. So Jesus allowed himself to be lifted up on the cross. He died for our sins so that he could save us from an eternal death. Jesus rose from the grave and he now sits on the throne of heaven. Anyone who looks at Jesus will be freed from the poison of sin because of the mighty power of Jesus. Nicodemus makes a few more appearances in the Gospels. He was there in the courtroom when Jesus was tried and sentenced to death. He was there at the cross to help move the body of Jesus from Golgotha to the tomb. I think it's safe to say Nicodemus believed in Jesus as his saviour. He looked to the cross and he had his own sins forgiven. Jesus saw with his own eyes how the story of the snakes foreshadowed the mission of Jesus. That's not the only thing Nicodemus could see. Long before he went to the cross, Nicodemus saw something different in Jesus. He was a unicorn. A rare man knew the scriptures better than any man. He saw the mighty power of God on display in the miracles of Jesus. And he saw the mighty power of God when Jesus rose from the tomb. If Nicodemus was here today, he would urge all of us to look to the cross. He would tell us that only God's mighty power can save us from sin, just as his mighty power saved the Israelites from the poisonous snakes. There is nothing we can do to save ourselves. We need a unicorn. We need God's might. We need Jesus. God wants to give us all new life. He wants to heal us of the poison of sin and give us a new hope in Christ. We cannot heal ourselves. We need to look to the cross. We need Jesus. If you're ready to take that step today, we invite you to do so now. Only God's mighty power can give you new life. Look to the cross and you will be saved. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you that Jesus can give us new life. In your name we pray. Amen. Our memory verse is Psalm 145 verse 3, which says this, Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Say it with me. Psalm 145 verse 3, Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Why not find this in your Bibles, underline it and highlight it and write it in a notebook so you can remember this awesome memory verse. This week we have a brand new devotional for you which you can find on the Breathe New Life Church website underneath the Breathe Kids Church section. We hope you enjoyed our first ultra rare amazing Bible story. Why not come back next week so you can find out about another amazing Bible story. Have a great week guys and we'll see you soon. Bye.